opinion was the most important tactical decision that could have been made. That he knew he was a th he was the target, and he left that school in an effort to try to encourage the shooter to also leave the school, with the focus of safety and security and well-being of our students in his mind. When that happened, one student was shot by the shooter. That student was transported immediately by Littleton Fire Rescue, and that student is currently in serious condition at a local hospital undergoing surgery. A second, a second victim was shot. That individual suffered a very minor gunshot wound and is being treated at a local hospital. And we believe that that individual will be, will be released before the end of the evening. Our active shooter protocol was, initial, it was immediately initiated by our school resource officer. The officer went immediately to the threat as he is trained, and all of the responding deputies and police officers also activated our regional active shooter protocol, and that is to go to the threat and try to eliminate the threat while keeping students and staff safe. Within 20 minutes of the time of the report of the shooting, our deputies found the suspect dead inside the school. It, currently, right now, it appears to us that that shooter is dead as a result of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. However, that determination remains under investigation and we will continue to look at those details. At this point in time, we have victims advocates with the families and the victims at the hospital, and we have investigators with the family of the shooter. We are beginning our investigation now as a crime scene. Uh, we have evacuated the entire school. Uh, the school was evacuated very slowly, deliberately, and meticulously. We wanted to ensure that all of our students, number one, were safe, and secondly, we wanted to ensure that we had no other suspects or individuals that were collaborators with our shooter. Although it will remain under investigation, we, at this point in time, we believe the shooter that is deceased is the only individual that was armed in this school today and came here to cause harm to the students and or faculty of this facility. However, that remains under investigation. We also have assets coming from the Colorado Bureau of Investigation to assist us with our responsibilities to process this crime scene collect evidence and do the work that we need to do so that we can come to a final conclusion of why this happened and how it happened. At this point in time, we have assets across the South Metro area talking with people who either know the suspect or have some association with him, and we are trying to collect that information. As I indicated, the school was evacuated methodically and very deliberately. Uh, we initially evacuated students to the Shepherd of the Hills Church, which is located about a block south of our current location. Very quickly, that facility became overwhelmed with the numbers of students and uh, parents that were trying to reunite. And we had to select a second reunification site, which is the Euclid Middle School, located at 777 West Euclid Avenue in Littleton, Colorado. Very frankly, that is a distance from here, but it is the most convenient and it's the largest facility that we could come up with quickly in order to do the work that we need to do quickly and efficiently. We are in the process now of reunifying our students and our families. Uh, we are in the process now of putting together a crisis intervention team that will be available for staff and students of Arapahoe High School as long as that group of crisis intervention professionals are needed. We will work in collaboration with the school district and we will work in collaboration with our colleagues across the state that provide crisis intervention and mental health assistance to anyone that needs it as a result of this tragic shooting. With that, that is the information I currently have to share. I will be back with you in a few moments with questions, but before I, get, before I answer any questions, I would like Superintendent of Schools, Scott Murphy, to join me and make, uh, make some comments, please. Sheriff, sure, can you stand next to you so we can take advantage of the microphones? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, sir. Can you just step up a little bit closer? Thank you. Our, our thoughts, our prayers are with all the families students affected. We are doing everything we can to work with our Arapahoe County Sheriff's Department and we'll do the care that we need to um, for the families as we go forward. It's a very, very difficult day for Littleton Schools and Arapahoe High School. Thank you, Scott. 
Uh, with that, uh, Governor Hickenlooper would also li like to make some comments. Governor, thank you for joining us. Well, I'm not sure what I can add. They, obviously, the, our, 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 our hearts go out to uh, the principal, Natalie Promenko, um, Scott Murphy, the superintendent you just heard. I mean, this is a good school district, and to have this all too familiar sequence where you have gunshots and parents racing to the school and, and unspeakable horror in a, a place of learning. And, and in this case, we saw the incredible training and preparation of our, of our first responders. And I give Sheriff Robinson, who announced his retirement today, of all the ironies. I mean, they had this train so that, again, Officers from all across the South Metro area were trained in how to go in immediately into that school and make sure that the, the perpetrator, this, this kid, uh, was, I mean, people, the, the officers went right to him and they got to him within, literally within minutes. That is a, a world of change from the way response used to happen and I think it, it just says volumes about these guys. And our, again, our, our hearts and prayers are with the entire Arapaho school community and, uh, and we'll do everything we can to help them get through this. Thank you, Governor. Uh, with that, I will uh, try to answer questions. I want to also tell you that there are some questions that clearly I am not in a position to answer because of the ongoing investigation, but I will certainly, as I usually try to, tell you when I can and cannot. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, I heard that the suspect's locker was a cause of concern. Can you tell us anything about that? Uh, it's a process of the ongoing investigation. We certainly will look at every uh, aspect and detail that may be associated with the suspect, not only his locker, uh, any place that he may have frequented in the school, and very, very frankly, uh, his home as well. Thank you. Sheriff, is the locker number 444? I would have no idea. Sheriff, you said that the teacher left the school immediately. Can you talk about what you know about the relationship between him and the student, why he knew he should leave? Still a matter under investigation of what the relationship between the shooter and the uh, teacher was. Uh, we know that the student that was armed with a shotgun, uh, as he entered the west side of Arapaho High School, uh, immediately asked for the location of this specific teacher and asked for that teacher by name. As soon as the teacher realized that, as I indicated in my initial comment, uh, he departed the school. Uh, that was a very wise tactical decision. He took himself away from the school and with an effort to try to encourage the shooter to go with him. Julie, what can you tell us about the, what what time, about the, uh, the, the student who was shot? How did that occur and what was going on there? Don't know the details. Still a matter under investigation. We do know that that student uh, suffered a serious gunshot wound. Uh, we believe that uh, the student is still in surgery in a local hospital. Uh, we certainly uh, uh, share our thoughts and our prayers with her and her family. Well, can you tell us about explosives or Molotov cocktails? Explosives, sure. We uh, believe, we, certainly as part of our protocol, our bomb squad from the sheriff's office responded. Uh, initially because of the fact that we never know and we want to be uh, err on the side of more assets than fewer. Uh, we believe that we have one device in the school. Uh, initially, it was reported to me that it was a Molotov cocktail, but my, my bomb squad is working that, uh, trying to identify it. I'll have more information the next briefing that we provide. Sure. How old yeah, is the what shooter? can you tell us about the shooter? His age, class, name, name. graduate. Well. First off, uh, I will not, uh, he is a current student of Rappo High School. Uh, I will not release his name. We have identified him. Uh, we have investigators that are with his family and with his colleagues. Uh, I will not identify him at this point in time. When it is appropriate, I will identify uh, the shooter. Do you have his age, Sheriff? Uh, again, I won't identify. I won't provide any information relative to uh, the shooter until I uh, am prepared to do so uh, relative to the ongoing investigation. What about yes, a student who intervened? Uh, question. Uh, you were talking about the west side of the school where the shooter entered. Give us a sense, because I've never been to this school. Give us a sense. Is this the office area? Is this one of the exits or the entrances on the other side? The, uh, the west side, the question was uh, the uh, configuration of the school on the west side. Uh, the west side of this school is typically made up of the student parking lot. Uh, it is an uh, area that has at least two and probably three if, they, if, if the kids are real innovative, uh, different entrances and exits that can be used. Goes into the immediate area of the gymnasium and the pool uh, in, on the west side, so that gives you a bit of a configuration of where we're at. Sheriff, who did the student ask for this specific teacher? Uh, he asked the other students that were in the immediate area the location of the specific teacher. How is it that no teacher or administrator encountered this student first? How did a student get to the armed student first? 
Well, I think first off, uh, you have to understand that this is a high school. Uh, these young men and women that are here to be educated come and go fairly freely. Uh, they have downtime, they have breaks in their day. So they are moving in and about the school on a regular uh, basis. Uh, certainly as the individual entered the uh, school, it's, he asked for the teacher immediately uh, from the students that were in the area. So there were no other uh, teachers in the area. Was the gun available? Was the gun visible at that time? Yeah, the, uh, the suspect was carrying a... Hang on. The, uh, the student that entered the high school was armed with a shotgun. Uh, I'm not at liberty, nor will I discuss the details of that weapon at this point. However, it was clear that he was armed with a shotgun. He made no effort to hide it or conceal it. Uh, he carried it into the school as he entered the school. And was it the other students who alerted the teacher then? The other, no, the, other, uh, the, uh, the word got around immediately that he was looking for the teacher. Yes, and the active shooter protocol, is that something that was uh, started right after Columbine or just in the last several years? A little bit, what's the history about that program? Well, clearly the active shooter protocol has to do with going to the threat and uh, not waiting. Uh, it is a protocol that has been trained across the state of Colorado, not just in, in uh, one, one or two local agencies, but we not only train lo uh, in our individual agencies, but then we come together regionally and we train on these particular uh, uh, protocols. Uh, I will uh, remind you of uh, training programs that we put in together and exercises around Operation Mountain Guardian uh, several uh, months ago that had to do with active shooter. Those protocols, unfortunately, have had to be used far, far, far too many times in Colorado and across the United States because of these tragic episodes where people decide they've got to even up the score with a weapon. Sir, yes. can you tell us, please, if there was an SRO? We had an SRO. The SRO immediately responded on his own uh, to the area of the threat. Do you know where well, can you tell us about the, the confrontation? I do not know. Thank you. Well, can you tell us about the confrontation between the... Initially, we were told there was a confrontation between the shooter and the uh, student that was uh, wounded. At this point in time, it appears that that is probably not accurate. It appears that the student was simply in the area of the shooter and was shot at the, to at the time the uh, shooter came through the, uh, came through the school. Can you describe where this person was shot? I, I will not discuss uh, the wounds uh, or any information around the victims at this point. How, How many was shots the shooter were able to get into the school before we assume he took his own life? Well, the shooter actually went quite a ways into the school because we found his body in, t in the internal uh, portion of the school in a classroom. Sure. Did anybody discharge police, law enforcement discharge weapons? There were no, uh, no law enforcement weapons discharged in the school. Uh, they were armed. Uh, certainly, uh, if you uh, speak with students and faculty that were in the school, uh, the deputy sheriffs and the police officers that responded and reacted to this active shooter were adequately armed. How many shots? They were armed. They were armed with uh, uh, urban street rifles and their service weapons, which is part of our protocols. Uh, they entered the uh, facility with the absolute responsibility and purpose of eliminating the threat. Uh, they quickly worked the school to try to find that threat, and as soon as they found the individual down, they realized uh, what the situation was. Anastasia. Sheriff, uh, will your folks or CBI or the FBI be searching the home of the shooter looking for any notes or evidence that this might have been seen coming? We will. The, the question was if we'll search the home of the shooter. We will conduct a thorough and complete investigation. We will take our time to ensure that it's done right. We will not do it quick. Part of our protocol will be a thorough investigation, which includes a search of the, of the suspect's home, a search of areas where the suspect may have had access to other weapons or material that would have motivated him to do this tragic act, and we will search portions of the school that he would have had uh, individual and immediate access to. Sure, at this point, is there any indication that this is tied to the anniversary of Sandy Hook? Uh, absolutely no indication at all that this would be tied to Sandy Hook. Certainly uh, something that we will look into. Uh, always an issue that we have to focus our attentions on. Sure. Is there a vehicle being searched in the parking lot that he drove here? Uh, if, he, if he brought a vehicle to this school, it will be searched. And it will be rendered safe first, and then it will be searched. How many shots fired and where did the shooting take place? The shooting happened in the immediate west portion, uh, entry of the school. Uh, I don't know how many shots were fired part of what our investigations, uh, investigators will be trying to conclude. And did the suspects actually have a class with a particular teacher? Did they know each other? Uh, they clearly had a relationship. Uh, the degree and level of that relationship is yet to be determined, something that we will talk about in days, not hours to Can come. Can you identify the teacher? And I will not. How about, will there be, I, will, I don't have any information. This may Julie. be more for the school superintendent, but will there be school 
how long before classes resume? I certainly would leave that to uh, uh, the uh, school board and to the superintendent, and I'm sure that's an issue that they will discuss in the hours to come and will make a decision. Uh, folks, I will take uh, about three more questions. Sheriff, sure, you said you yes, sir. Uh, earlier you said that there were a no conference in your last news conference. Has there been any conferences or collaborators identified? And the second question, part of it is um, there was no uh, threats made to this school prior, not by this man, but by another person that you will also perhaps investigate? Uh, first off, uh, the question was if there were other threats. We don't know yet. Uh, no threats that we are aware of uh, to this school or to this teacher, but that's part of what we are trying to investigate. Uh, the, uh, at my 145 briefing, I told you that it appeared to us that there were no other co-conspirators or collaborators. It continues to appear to us that the shooter that is deceased was the lone actor in this tragic event, but we will continue to try to confirm that and ensure that we have that information accurately taken care of. Marshall? Sheriff, you said that you've got deputies talking with his family and colleagues. What did you mean by colleagues? Well, uh, certainly uh, other students, friends, family members, uh, anyone who had, may have been associated with this individual that he may have indicated days or weeks or months ago that this was something that was on his mind. Uh, we will do a thorough and complete investigation, and that includes dealing with anyone who may have been associated with our shooter uh, over the last several months or weeks. Yes, sir. And, uh, Sheriff, as far as people who live around here, any idea how long everything's going to be shut down? They need to find a new route? I, th I think that's a great question. The, uh, the, uh, we will uh, keep this intersection and this immediate area shut down for the remainder of the night. I can't imagine we will open this area until shortly after 10 p.m. tonight. Uh, so folks that are traveling need to make appropriate arrangements. Are the the, fact, that, the, fact, the right? fact that we are keeping it closed down is a product of the resources we currently have in the immediate area and the fact that we have an ongoing investigation that will require our public safety professionals to move back and forth safely. We will keep this closed for a period of time. Sure. Yes, sure, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay, I'm uh, so sorry then. Uh, 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 it is not my last day. I simply announced yesterday my retirement, but that's not relevant to our situation. Has everybody been evacuated? Sure. Yeah. Was there anyone injured in the evacuation? None. Are okay. the other schools off lockdown? We have no other schools on lockdown. We initially thought about it, but immediately realized that this situation was isolated specifically to Arapahoe High School. With that, folks, I thank you for your time. Uh, we will put out another media release, but it will be my intention that we are currently at 3.15, pushing 3.20 p.m. Mountain, Mountain Standard Time. Uh, I will give another media brief at 6 p.m., and I don't know the location, but I can guarantee you it will not be in this intersection. Thank you all very much. The very latest information coming in on this school shooting this afternoon and a much clearer picture of what happened, but still a lot of work to do. We'll certainly wrap up uh, everything he said, but first we want to get to Justin Joseph. He's live now with a student who spoke to a librarian who fled the library. Apparently this all happened near the library, right, Justin? That's right, Boris. So this is Frank Warnoff, who went home today during lunch uh, uh, from Arapahoe High School. And when he was on his way back, that's when he saw the rush of police cars here. Uh, we want to be very sensitive to the information because uh, Frank knows both the teacher that was involved in terms of the teacher that was shot, as well as the student who's the alleged shooter. I've asked him not to use names at this point, but to describe his afternoon. So when you were coming back, what was the first thing you noticed? I just noticed uh, a few cop cars had blocked off the western side of the lot I believe and there are a few fire trucks and then swarm of at least it looks like a hundred cop cars and you came over here and you saw the librarian again we don't want to use his name tell me about your conversation with the librarian he told me that uh, he, he ran out and he said he was in the library and the gunner said where's so-and-so and he found him shot at him and missed so he immediately ran out and came over to the side of the road. And since I know the details, basically what he told you was that uh, this the shooter came in looking for him, the librarian, uh, and and the librarian took off running out here. And What did he say specifically about what the shooter said? Uh, he just said, where is he? And he was just looking for him specifically. It wasn't a whole lot that was said. Can you describe the librarian's state of mind? How was he doing emotionally? Uh, he just seemed incredibly shocked. Uh, he was in awe. He couldn't really repeat more than the two or three statements that he gave me earlier. And what were the specific statements? Uh, I docked him from the speech and debate team and that just shocked him and he just kept repeating his name and what happened and where he was. That's all he could tell me. So in other words, the teacher said that because he had allegedly uh, penalized the student a couple days ago, he believes that's why the student came back after him and that's what this teacher told you. That's what I heard, yes. Now the shooter is a friend of yours. Again, we don't want to use his name. Talk about him as a person. What do you know about him? What's he like? 
he was, I mean, I can see a bit nerdy and geeky, but in a sort of charming way. So I can see that he was bullied, but he was always very humble and down to earth, always in a good mood and energetic. So I just never saw him as this kind of person. And we talked off camera a little bit. Uh, did you know if he had firearms? He had talked about guns before. What can you say about that? I had a friend who said uh, they were shown a picture of a gun and said it was just for hunting only. And uh, you said also that this, past, this this week he seemed he was angry about some things. Can you talk about his emotional state, what he had said coming up to today? Um, I wasn't there, but I heard in one of his classes Wednesday that uh, he went out to get something from his locker, I believe, came back and started pounding on the door because it was locked, and they just couldn't figure out why he was so upset. Anything else you want to say about him? I mean, at this point, I mean, obviously a difficult afternoon for you. Um, I sympathize for his relatives and friends. I know... He was a good person, just people make mistakes. And what's it like for you this afternoon? I mean, how are you doing? Uh, a little shook enough. <laughs> um, everyone I know is okay. No one is really in too much trouble, so I'm doing well. And the teacher, the librarian, he talked to the, he actually was shot at, he said? He was shot at, but he missed. He was able to dodge the blast of the shotgun. And then he came out here, is that why? It, did he describe any reason why he came out here? Or? Some kid charged at him with a shotgun, and he wanted to get away. Anything else you can say to help everybody understand this? Um, like I said, people make mistakes, and things happen, I guess. Well, Frank, we really appreciate your time. I know it's a very difficult story to tell, especially when you're one of the people that know the parties involved, so we appreciate you talking to us out here. And again, Deb, just to recap what Frank told us, uh, he was at home during lunch today. He came back to the school. That's when he saw the rush of police cars coming here to Arapahoe High School. He pulled over because he couldn't get into the high school. He says at that point, he ran into the librarian. He says the librarian was essentially right behind me. The librarian, whose name we are not using at this point, was very shaken up, had described how this student, the shooter, whose name we not using, uh, came into the school, asked for this teacher specifically. Uh, the librarian said that he saw the student approaching him. The student took several shots at him. The librarian was able to run out of the school over to this area behind me. He says he was very shaken up. Uh, Frank says he had a conversation with the librarian. The librarian says that he had, quote, docked this student a few points in his uh, speech class earlier this week. He believed that's the reason why the shooter uh, came back to the school today with his gun. We also talked to Frank about what he knows about the shooter. He said he was a friend of his. He described him as sort of nerdy, uh, kept to himself, but he says he is surprised that he took this action. He says he did see some signs earlier this week that he was angry, but obviously no signs that would have pointed to what happened here at Arapahoe High School today. Obviously a very, very difficult afternoon for all of the students that were involved. We'll continue to stay out here and get more uh, stories and report those as they develop. Deb Boris. Justin, thank you. Some interesting information coming in. That's the second student to report that the librarian was the target of the shooter. Obviously the librarian and made it out, but two students were hurt, and so we'll just have to wait and see if police actually confirm that information. Yeah, we understand the librarian was also a teacher, so that's where the early uh, indications of a teacher being targeted came from. Uh, Dave Young is standing by. He is where families are being reunited at the church just down the street from Arapahoe High School. And Dave, you have a family that has been reunited yes. at this point. Yes, we, we're talking to Grace Bernier and her family, uh, Happy, and her brother Lee here. Grace, uh, tell us, you, someone told you they thought it might be a friend of yours, or you th heard that that might be the case of someone who was, who was hurt? Um, well, this girl said that she witnessed it, and she said that um, it was my friend. And, um, and she was sure of it. I mean, like, she was really scared, and she was crying and stuff. And... Um, and I was pretty in shock when I heard it, but um, I don't know. I don't know for sure. Now but she, hearing... she said, she said that though. Yeah. Um, and you said it was very frightening for you guys inside the school. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Talk about that a little bit. Um, well, we were like really scared because we didn't know what was really going on, and um, and like finding out on the news that two people were getting shot and stuff was was pretty scary. And you said you had practiced this though, you drilled. Yeah. Tell us about that. What are they, you had gone through drills? Yeah, we went through um, a lot of drills. Like um, we did lockdown, so we would have to hide in the corner and make sure that all the doors are locked. And then um, if there's like a fire that we would have to um, go outside and you know, like stay calm and stuff. So. Yes, yeah, so that's what we did. So and we were all calm. 
happy. You said you were just, what, praying for your daughter? Tell me about that. Oh, yeah. After I'm here, I pray for everybody, you know. I, I, I hope no, nothing happened. But I'm here, two people got shot. That's why I, I like to call her, you know, make sure she's okay, something like that. Yeah. And then, yeah, I got the answer. Oh, thanks, God, she's okay. She's yeah. like that, oh, yeah. Emily, you said you couldn't believe it hearing this again in Colorado. Yeah, I could not believe it because... Like, you know, I thought this would be like a safe area, you know, a very family, like, instantaneous. But I was, I was very surprised, like, they were just sitting in, at this area, like, wow. Were you glad um, to see your sister? Yes, I'm very glad to see my sister. And are you back together? Okay. Yeah. A little hug for us. Did you oh, yeah. give her a hug yet? Yeah. Yeah, already. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for talking with us. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. I hope your friend is okay. I hope so, too. Okay. Thank you. So uh, back here live, as you can see, uh, a lot of emotion. Things have really changed here now that everyone has heard. Uh, as we go over here to the school where still hundreds of parents are waiting to be reunited, the buses continue rolling up here. They've asked us to stay away from the parking lot where the buses are now coming. That has uh, sort of been buckled up by the police. And uh, the parents are, are decidedly now that the, uh, I don't know, the, the period has been a matter of hours now. And there's now a bit of hostility because there's so many cameras that have been over there. And they're asking us, people are asking us not to take their pictures and don't want to be interviewed. Whereas immediately after this, uh, people seemed almost anxious to talk to us uh, as if they wanted to share what they were going through. Um, but now that they the situation is calmed down and they know it's just a matter now of getting back together with their child and that everyone's accounted for, as you heard the sheriff saying, they believe it was this isolated shooter uh, who took his own life, and it sounds like the, uh, the victims are going to be okay. That young lady just hearing uh, from a friend of hers that it was a friend of hers, she was told it was a friend of hers from another friend that I witnessed the shooting, uh, and uh, she understandably is in shock. She was uh, shivering quite a bit and just being reunited with her family. So... Uh, this is a story that is yet to sink in. People really cannot believe that, again, here in Colorado, something like this uh, has happened. Uh, again, another parents and grandparents showing up here uh, to be together with their kids. And uh, here's a family here. Would, would you all want to talk to us for a second? Sorry, what was that? Do you want to talk to us for a second? Yeah, or your mom? Fine. Uh, come, yeah. come on in. Just come as a family. Yeah. Tell me your name. Uh, James Dalrymple. Spell it for me, James. Uh, J-A-M-E-S-D-A-L-R-Y-M-P-L-E. You guys are just getting together, Mom? What's your name? Yeah, just Mary. Mary. So, we just uh, picked him up. Just picked him up. Mm -hmm. What was going through your mind, Mary? Um, well, I had a sister who was murdered, so um, I was pretty freaked out. But I'm just grateful to God that he took care of my son and all the other kids that were in there. And, I mean, you must know how, it, how hard it is. You've probably done a lot of these um, videos or news stories, and uh, it's very difficult when it's your child. It is, and tell us what you went through. It's just like, you think it's a drill at the beginning because you go through so many of them, and then like when you're getting texts from all these people from different schools and like out of state asking if you're okay, like it's just kind of surreal. Like it just hasn't really sunk in yet. So I don't really like, know exactly what to tell you, but. Kind of in shock. Yeah. You're probably going to be in shock for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Are you all going to yeah. try to talk this out as a family? And Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Absolutely. Are you a sister? Yeah. Tell Big me your sister. Name. McKenna. McKenna, uh, what was going through your mind when you were hearing about this? Um, well, my mom walked in, told me, and then I got a text from a friend who also has siblings here. And so my first thing was trying to get as much correct information out to as many people as possible. So posting on Facebook. Um, I know that there was a big thing about Twitter not being the best, but there was a lot of information that was getting into Twitter that was correct, that was later confirmed by the news, so kind of just talking to people about that, um, and then texting him the whole time and just making sure yeah. that, you know, as many people as possible were knowing. Mary, you probably remember Columbine. Absolutely. Was that, were you thinking about that? Yeah. I think all of us were. I think we all were, yes, yes. This looks like it was more an isolated incident against a teacher. Um, I feel very sorry for the young man. Um, and for the two families who've had kids that were injured. So I've been doing a lot of praying for all those families. Mm -hmm. Me too. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. You too. I, th I, th th I think that tells us the whole story right there. I mean, a family being reunited, uh, a lot of people thanking 
uh, whoever they are going to thank for, for what's uh, going on here and a lot of people who remember Columbine uh, too well to have this happen again. Yeah, Dave, it makes you want to hug your kids a little bit tighter tonight, for sure. Some summer sure does. Moments. Sure does. And Dave, as we just heard from that family, the reality is really yet to sink in. Again, a shooting at Arapaho High School. We just received new information a short while ago from the Arapaho County Sheriff. A lone gunman entered the high school with a shotgun, Go ahead. firing, targeting a teacher. And uh, apparently he missed the teacher, shot another student. Two people ended up getting hurt, both of them in the hospital right now, one of them going through surgery. We understand that officers entered the school and uh, later found the suspect. Dave, we want to thank you uh, for that report. Uh, the suspect was found deep inside the school and uh, apparently had shot himself inside a classroom. And now three hours later, it appears that all of the students have been evacuated from the school now. And you can see they are still in the process of being reunited with their families. And that situation will probably continue for a couple of hours. And the sheriff mentioned that that intersection at Dry Creek and Arapaho and University will be closed probably at least until 10 o'clock tonight. So they are suggesting to avoid that intersection if at all possible. And during the news conference just a short time ago, the governor was on hand and he said his heart went out to the students and the staff and the family members of um, the Arapaho High School as well as the Littleton School District. He says it's a good school district. It's an all too familiar scene, an unspeakable horror, he called it. But he was impressed with the training and the preparation at the school and amongst the law enforcement agencies that responded. Mm, certainly. We want to get to Greg Nieto now. He's nearby. Uh, Greg, what's going on? Uh, yeah, we're uh, just south of uh, the high school, closer to the church, and it's just that day uh, Young uh, was alluding to. It's just a constant stream of families uh, going back and forth, um, embracing, hugging, uh, kissing. Um, you see a lot of folks that have brought blankets uh, for their sons and, and, and their daughters. Uh, they make their way from the church back uh, toward the, uh, the school. Just some incredible stories out here of um, how parents... Uh, found out about uh, the shooting itself. Uh, we talked to a number of parents that, of course, had uh, been uh, receiving text messages from their son or daughter. We've also heard from uh, people that, in one case, a mom forgot her cell phone. She was at work. She had to find out about uh, her daughter through a uh, third party that her daughter was okay. Um, you can uh, imagine how difficult it would be to receive a text message directly from your, your son or daughter, uh, but in, at least in one case, there was an individual who had to find out through a second party uh, what was going on and, of course, race down to the school to make sure that uh, her daughter uh, was okay. Understandably, for those students, we, we wanted to ask, uh, do you have any idea how many students were in class today by chance? Has there been any confirmation on that end? Uh, I have not uh, have gotten a number on that uh, as of yet, Boris, I think at this point um, they are, are, are simply trying to make sure they have all the, the kids out of the, the school, uh, very uh, fluid yet uh, at the same time organized uh, scene uh, at University in Dry Creek where you saw the students uh, being loaded up onto the school buses and then Arapahoe County Sheriff deputies basically uh, providing an escort for the school buses to get out of the area. I think the, the first priority obviously was to get the kids uh, out of the school over to the church, and then the uh, whole uh, attendance uh, numbers process uh, could begin. Yeah, it's going to be a lengthy process here this afternoon, and we understand all the students are out of the school at this point, but from where you are at the church and at the staging place and where people are being reunited, are people starting to clear out, or are they mingling around, sharing stories? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think uh, the, the majority of people that we've talked to um, want to uh, convey uh, thanks and gratitude to both uh, the high school and the school district, Rappel County Sheriff's. You know, of course, we're seeing a lot of uh, law enforcement agencies from other parts of the metro area that are helping out. They wanted to express uh, thanks that uh, the, the protocol, the procedure uh, worked at least in, in, in their kids' uh, a case to get them out safely. Um, a lot of folks initially had kind of uh, lingered here, I think, just to make sure that, you know, the high school. A lot of people know each other. A lot of people, uh, people know each other's families. They wanted to make sure their children were okay, but obviously uh, a neighbor's child uh, is okay as well. Uh, you definitely have a sense of uh, community out here. I think initially a lot of people were sticking around because they wanted to uh, show uh, some unification as uh, it's gone further into the afternoon. We're starting to see more people uh, begin to take off.
All right, Greg Nieto, live at the, uh, just down the street from the school near the church where people are being reunited. Still so many questions uh, unanswered. As we mentioned before, uh, officers are now speaking to uh, the family and classmates of the shooter, trying to figure out if there were any signs that something like this was going to happen. We've heard reports that there were uh, heated exchange, that there was shot wounds. We also know that two other students were injured. One is in critical condition. We know that victim underwent surgery this afternoon. The other student who, who was also shot and is being treated at Swedish Medical, though his injuries are reportedly minor, and at least the second student is expected to survive. Now take a look. This was the scene moments after the shooting with officers swarming and students being evacuated from the school, taken out slowly and meticulously by SWAT teams with their hands above their heads. All students were patted down by officers as a precaution before being taken to Shepherd of the Hills Church on University where they were reunited with their parents. And we spoke with one student there who described the terrifying moments as the shooting unfolded. It's pretty scary. There were two shots by my classroom. Then we heard the screaming. <laughs> and we, we dove for cover and our teacher locked the door. And I sat in the middle of my two best friends and we just, and we tried to stay calm. <laughs> we tried. We tried. <laughs> terrifying moments this afternoon and just within the last couple of hours we have learned new information about the shooter and a possible motive. The gunman came into the school and immediately asked for the location of a very specific teacher and he named that teacher by name. Uh, when the teacher heard that he that this individual was asking for him the teacher exited the school immediately. In my opinion was the most important tactical decision that could have been made that he knew he was, a th he was the target, and he left that school in an effort to try to encourage the shooter to also leave the school with the focus of safety and security and well-being of our students in his mind. All the Littleton schools went on lockdown after our officers realized what was going on. Students have now all been released, and police say there is no more immediate danger. Police have not...